Hi readers and listeners, welcome back to your read aloud by the Great Horn Spoon. Today we'll be working on chapter four. So readers, today on your writing, you were working on building background stories for your characters because you know that writers create background stories. This stuff would not be interesting if I just said, this is a deck play. No way, you need to create a background story. Where is the duck from? How old is the duck? What's the duck's name? Where did the duck go to school? What's the duck's job? Well, today, as I'm reading by the Great Horned Spoon, I want you to think about the background story for Jack. What's Jack's name? How old is Jack? Where's Jack from? What about Jack's family? What's Jack's job? So remember, readers, readers, listen for details. Chapter four. With the coming of dawn, the side wheeler entered the channel and passed under the fortress guns of Rio de Janeiro. Praiseworthy and Jack stood on the edge with a warm breeze snapping their trousers. It seemed to Jack that he had almost forgotten what land looked like. The mere sight of a hill or distant tree excited him. And then the sunny harbor came into view with church bells ringing across the water. House windows reflected the dazzling morning sun. Homesick, Master Jack? Asked Praiseworthy in a quiet voice. Jack looked up. I wish Aunt Arabella and Constance and Sarah were with us, but of course the gold country is no place for women and children. It's not too late to change your mind, Master Jack. Change my mind? The butler rubbed the tip of his sharp nose and looked down into Jack's eyes. Cape Horn lies ahead of us. It's a bad stretch of water. Very bad indeed, and the captain tells me. The wind comes howling in like banshees, and the waves can batter a ship into splinters. No one will think less of you, Master Jack, if you leave the Wady Wilma here at Rio. We'll manage to get you a passage back to Boston. Readers, I'm going to stop because I just noticed so many spelling words. So let's go over the spelling words that we just heard. Dawn. What other spelling words did you hear? Fortress. Trousers. Distant. Harbor. One starts with a D. Dazzling. Howling, splinters, passage. For the next page, I'm going to read four spelling words. Let's see if you can hear. Jack turned away from Praiseworthy's gaze and tightened his eyes against the breeze. He felt a welling up inside him. Didn't Praiseworthy want him along anymore? I'm not scared, he answered finally. <sighs> well, the thought did cross my mind. Jack looked up into the butler's eyes. Go home? How could he go home without his pockets filled with gold nuggets? Hmm, I'm going to California, the boy said. I'm not turning back, no sir, he wiped his nose. But if you don't want me for a partner anymore, well, I'll... <gasps> don't talk nonsense interrupted Praiseworthy with a sudden smile as bright as the morning. You said exactly what I thought you would, but I had to be sure. You'll do, Mr. Jack. You'll do. He put a hand on the boy's shoulder, and Jack looked up. He could feel the reassuring grip of Praiseworthy's fingers. The butler winked, and Jack smiled and wiped his nose again. Above them, in the pilot house, Captain Swain was looking for the sea raven among the ships at anchor. So readers, listeners, did you hear those spelling words? Smashed, interrupted, shoulder, reassuring. Nice job listening. Their masts were as thick as reeds in a pond. Many were gold ships like the Lady Wilma herself, pausing to take on fresh water and supplies. When the customs boat came alongside Captain Swain, he shouted out, Is the Sea Raven in port, sir? No, Captain, she left us five days ago. 
the ship's master, greeted this news with his familiar roar. Last. Well, we won't tarry. By grabs, we'll sail tomorrow with the outgoing tide. While the Lady Wilma took on coal and fresh provisions, the gold seekers invaded the city. There were Americans everywhere. Jack posted his letter. If he had found his sea legs, he had lost his land legs. The cobbled streets of Rio seemed to pitch and roll under him. Praiseworthy had to use his umbrella as a cane until the city stopped heaving about. Throughout the day, ships could be seen arriving and departing. Old friends from, from all around the country met on streets thousands of miles from home. That night, when Praiseworthy and Jack returned to their ship, their arms were loaded with exotic fruits never seen back home in Boston. Bananas, pineapples, guava. When they awoke the next morning, the Lady Wilma was already setting a sea course with the outgoing tide. Jack stood at the captain porthole and watched the city slip away, holding up its windows like mirrors to the pink dawn sky. After breakfast, Jack started for the stern boat with table scraps for good luck. Suddenly, he heard the blare of Dr. Buckby's alarm trumpet. Suddenly, he heard, he heard it again, and moments later, the horse doctor appeared from a passageway with the trumpet at his lips, and his cheeks swelled out like apples. Will you do that with me? Do, 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 do. The noise brought passengers from every direction. <gasps> it's stolen, Dr. Buckby wailed, pausing for breath. <sighs> Gone! What's this? said Praiseworthy, interrupting a stroll around deck. What's gone? My gold map! I'm ruined! The horse doctor gave a final wail on the trumpet. <laughs> My brother, rest his bones, posted it to me as he lay dying in California. And now it's gone. It's been stolen. It's gone. Cut I Higgins, said Mountain Jim. But almost at once, it was discovered that Cut I Higgins was gone too. He had been forgotten in the haste of coaling and watering the ship. And when Jack reached the after deck, he found that good luck was also missing. Even the small stern boat was there no more. All that remained was the canvas shaped over two empty boxes. The scoundrel, Captain Swain stormed. He must have lit the night, lit out the night we lay off at Rio, waiting to enter the channel, rowed himself ashore. Turn back, commanded Dr. Buckby, waving his tin trumpet and going around in a circle on his peg leg. Impossible, answered the ship's master. Then I'm ruined, I'm ruined. Nonsense, said Praiseworthy. I dare say there's more than one gold mine in California. You may be the first man among us to strike it rich. Jack said nothing about the pig. In the darkness and hurry of his escape, Cut-Eye Higgins must not have realized he had a curly tail companion aboard the boat he stole. Jack was sorry about Dr. Buckby and his treasure map, but he was pleased with good luck's good luck. The thief had no doubt beached the pig with the boat. Jack watched the green coast of Brazil slip further away and even smiled to himself. The pig was forever safe from the cook. I'll stop there. Next is chapter five, Land of Fire.